Rahim, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope everybody is fine by the grace of Allah Ta'ala. I uh, hope everybody is enjoying his or her vacations. Uh, today is the first online lecture uh, that is distribution of stock returns and portfolio optimization and Excel approach. I wanted to start uh, with the next chapter. But uh, it was better that we uh, try to uh, just summarize what I, uh, whatever we have studied and try to apply that thing on Excel. Then we'll start with the next chapter. It would be easier for us. It is so. We started with three theories. One is the portfolio theory. One is the portfolio theory. The second is the modern portfolio theory, and the third third is the postmodern portfolio theory. Uh, initially, uh, people used to uh, recognize uh, they uh, used to invest on the basis of two major parameters. One was the return, and what was the risk associated with them. They uh, defined uh, return by the using the first parameter of statistic, that is the mean, and uh, using the second st uh, moment of uh, statistic, that is the variance of the standard deviation. They defined the risk. And as we know, okay, we keep on increasing uh, the assets in a portfolio, our risk decreases. So what happened? They define risk as the weighted uh, risk of individual securities uh, in, the, in a portfolio as the portfolio risk and the weighted return of individual securities as the portfolio return. That was what was going on. But in 1952, Markowitz came up with a uh, with uh, uh, came up with the notion that uh, basically when you put your securities in a portfolio, individually they are contributing to the risk, and as pairs, as as groups, the correlation between them it is also contributing them. In other words, he penalizes the risk by an additional parameter that was the correlation or the, in other words the covariance between them. Uh, he defined that the portfolio risk would be the weighted risk of individual securities, weighted risk of individual securities that is that represents uh, the left hand side of the equation that is this and the weighted covariance between them. Combining them, the total risk was defined. However, the return was defined in the same manner that was defined by in, in the era of portfolio theory. From 1952, this era uh, came, to know, came, be, uh, came to be known as modern portfolio theory. So Markowitz was the first person who came up with this thing. In other words, he defined, he stated that risk is of two types. One is the diversifiable risk, and the second is the non-diversifiable risk. That is the non-diversifiable risk. And in other words, a diversifiable risk can be also known as a, uh, unsystematic risk, or firm-based risk, or idiosyncratic risk, and the non-diversifiable risk is also known as systematic risk or the market risk. The market risk or the non-diversifiable risk or the systematic risk cannot be diversified away. However, we can mitigate this portion of the risk through intelligent diversification. That was the contribution done by Markowitz. Then again in 1952, there was a person as Roy, he came up with the, he presented the, in 1952, he presented the safety first concept and he said people, investors, uh, they want to diversify, they want to, they care for, they care for the safety first, that means they care for the downside risk. Actually, we've got the risk is, is, is of two types. Total risk is of two types. One is the upside risk and the second is the downside risk. When we go for the variance, the variance 
takes the whole the whole and the strand deviation like a strand deviation of plus minus 5 so plus 5 is the upside risk and minus 5 is the downside risk uh, uh, from the mean point of view uh, me, taking mean uh, so the so people don't want to diversify the upside rate that, that is if they get 5% more but they want to diversify the the downside risk that was the thing. This idea was presented by Roy and in 1970s Bava then Bava and Lindenberg and Fish, Fishberg Bava developed the proxy for uh, downside as risk as lower partial movements and Fishberg Fishberg, Burn and Bauer and Lindenberg extended that to uh, risk neutral, risk taker, and skewness and kurtosis and and different levels in between them, uh, uh, different levels of downside risk, and it became more flexible as compared to what was presented by Markowitz in 1952. So basically, basically, this is a recollection of what we did. If you want to go further, if you look at the competing two models, uh, the restrictions are the same, that all weights will be added to one, and the portfolio return is the weighted return of individual securities. However, the proxies of risk is are different. That's why uh, we call them two competing models, the variance based and, and the LPM based. So coming to the Markowitz model, Markowitz model, the first half, the left hand side represents the uh, the, the left hand side represents the diversifiable risk and this is the non diversifiable risk and we have proved that thing in the class that this is the non diversifiable and this is the diversifiable one the major premise of markets is the stock returns are normally distributed that is it covers a bell shape that means there is no skewness the and kurtosis is equivalent to a free sorry so the tails are equally distributed the left hand side is equal to right hand side and uh, uh, this is if you remember is covered under the in, in each and every book of finance on the basis of this thing uh, this is what normal distribution is and uh, we should be knowing uh, how to construct this uh, to uh, how to know okay, whether our returns are normally distributed distributed I put a video link over here you can watch it and eventually when you'll get the assignment you do it so when the returns are normally distributed what does it say that there is no room for skewness and kurtosis so there are four moments moments of stats so we've got left with only two the first is mean and 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 uh, uh, variance of standard and what we study in finance the risk and return the risk is only defined in the terms of variance it is not defined in the terms of skewness and kurtosis and mean is exclusively defined by the first moment that is p then the risk and return relationship is developed and efficient frontier with the risk on the x axis and the return on the y axis <sighs> This was the thing I was saying, okay, when a portfolio, if you add the number of securities in a portfolio, what happens? Your risk goes down to a point where it becomes the becomes flat, the curve becomes flat and becomes almost parallel to the x-axis. Now, if you draw, draw a line perpendicular from y-axis, that is... Uh, that is the curve that uh, overlaps the this curve so this is known as the market risk this whole is known as the market risk or the systematic risk and this is known as idiosyncratic risk or diversifiable risk or unsystematic risk or firm risk risk there are four major names for it 
this was the cont cont uh, contribution, major contribution done by the Markowitz. Then coming to the second model, again, it is also covers the same thing that this is the diversifiable side and this is the non-diversifiable side, but the measure of the proxy of risk is changed. The proxy of risk can be uh, downside risk, can be downside skewness, can be downside kurtosis, and the type of investor. It, it is uh, this model is very flexible. It can accompany all type of investor, risk taker, risk neutral, and even jo, that is the common the, the risk averse investors. So this model is very flexible as compared to the one. In other words, we can say a downside risk portfolio model uh, is a wider version and Markowitz is a special case in this uh, of the downside risk. Where when the stocks will be normally distributed and uh, you want to calculate the downside risk from the mean value, then downside risk values and the markets model, model values will be will yield the same answer but if the stocks are not normally distributed or the downside risk is not measured from the mean perspective of of the sample like you take the example of the toppers of, of a class the toppers for them the downside risk is if they lose the a the downside risk is losing the a and for a mediocre is losing B and uh, for a weak student it would be losing C. So the downside risk will be defined differently by different uh, students. Likewise the investors define do downside risk accordingly whatever they want. They want to follow the market or they are a high achiever, they are a low achiever. It, it is a very very flexible model the downside risk based portfolio model. Uh, over here, if you see the n, n, the value of uh, this is the this is how you define the uh, the variance, the downside variance over here, and this is how you define the covariance over here. And if you see, this is the value of n. This n is if the value is less than one, that is 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, then we say the investor is risk taker. If the value is around about 1, 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, then it is a risk neutral investor. If the value closes to 2, is closer to 2 or 2, 2.1 and onwards, it is a risk investor, risk reverser. 2 is basically a risk reverse investor and semi variance. Then if the invest, you increase the value to 3 or up to 4, so you, uh, you add uh, the uh, to, uh, your downside risk will be measured in terms of skewness or downside skewness or downside kurtosis. It is not necessarily just be clear that risk is only measured in terms of variance or standard deviation. Risk proxy can be skewness also, can be kurtosis also, can be downside skewness also, can be downside kurtosis also or can be combination of all of them also. That's why when we move to the higher moment uh, uh, higher moment portfolio models that in those model we add uh, sometimes we take the proxy of risk as skewness only as kurtosis only as variance only or we can use the proxy as uh, variance and skewness variance and skewness and kurtosis skewness and kurtosis there are different combination on it and we can put different weights on likewise over here we can uh, uh, add a downside skewness and downside kurtosis also in higher moments. In the matrix version, if you remember, it is donated in this way. This is the main uh, matrix because we will be using this thing uh, in the in our Excel uh, exercise. This the X represents the weight, and this represents your covariance. When it's uh, uh, it, the covariance over here, or it can be Go load partial moments. Okay. So what you have to do, you will be generating a random. Uh, you'll be using the rent between command, and you'll be generating stock prices on monthly basis. And we'll do 
convert those stock prices into returns and you can consult these uh, these two uh, these are very two good videos you can check them and then for a practical assignment you'll have to download this this uh, uh, data and eventually do what i'll be doing in in a in a in, in the next 5 minutes okay in order to um, apply these models there are some problems that when we build an efficient frontier uh, i'll come directly efficient frontier so what happens when you make an efficient frontier it eventually goes in the act form yeah? it goes downward also but we need the efficient frontier where till that point where if you draw a, a, a tangent point it is parallel to the y axis that is the global minimum minimum various point we don't need the points below the efficient frontier is only over there if you remember in the class these are this these area represents the inefficient point these are the unattainable points and these are the attainable points but efficient points and all points on efficient frontier are equal as you know but this is still now this is the efficient frontier rest we don't need it so what happens when we normally build an efficient frontier using uh, simpler uh, methods that we will be in uh, will be coming up so what happens we get the downside also so we only concentrate on this thing and there are other reasons also uh, that are attached to it k okay, we uh, Uh, so uh, okay, where the problem of the general non-linear programming optimization comes, so we uh, follow the Markowitz critical line uh, of uh, critical line optimization algorithms. These are the algorithm he defined a Z function, and he optimized this on the basis of this taking the lambda. Lambda represents the slope of the line, and it has positive value. when it's got positive value what would happen the uh, all the uh, this is efficient frontier so these are the lambdas the slope of the line over here so what will happen you'll get you'll get only those points that are way up above the minimum various point 